good afternoon students <clears throat> i am back so today we are going to study the next topic that is evidences of evolution so last lecture we have studied about evolution what is evolution that is pre existence of the life on the earth or existence of life on the earth is called as proto biogenesis or evolution today we are going to study about the basic evidences or the proofs of evolution which led to the existence of the life on the earth right so total you have six evidences the first one is morphological evidences do you understand by the word evidence evidence is nothing but the proofs right the first one is called as morphological evidences now what exactly is morphology the branch of the biology which generally deals with the study of the external structure of an organism is generally called morphology right so external appearance of an organism is generally called as morphology so you can see there are certain pictures which have been shown in the textbook right that is about the plants and animal now all those plants and animal have certain similarities in between them right let's talk about the similarities in the animals right the structure of the mouth the structure of the nostril the position of the eyes correct the position of the ear pinna and also the hairs present on the body right okay similarities between the plants they have a, a specialized leaf structure they have a leaf venation and leaf petal what is venation the arrangement of the veins in the leaf is called as venation and petal is the stalk through which the leaf gets attached to the stem right so you can see all those plants and all those animal has certain similarities in their external structure or an appearance right so this indicates that certain group of organism have generally come or they have came across from their common ancestor that is called the first evidence which is called morphological evidences that generally indicates only the external appearance of an organism when we talk about the similarities in plants and similarities in animal it says that same group of organism have generally evolved or originated from their common ancestor second one is generally called anatomical evidences now what is anatomy the branch of the biology which generally deals with the study of a internal structure of an organism is generally called anatomy right so here we are going to talk about the anatomical evidences so let's take a simple example fore limb of the hand hind limb of the horse hind limb is nothing but the legs right okay wings of the birds and the fins of the whale i have taken four examples right once again that is fore limb of the hand hind limb of the horse uh, wings of the birds and fins of the whale you can see that all this four organism structure is similar the structure of all this four organism is generally made up of your bone right isn't it but you can see that they all four have different function right that is i can say that hand of the man is used to lift the object fair uh, what you can say hand of the man is generally used for lifting the object second hind limb of the horse that is the leg of the horse is generally used for running next wings of the bat are generally used for flying and fins of the whale are generally used for swimming right okay so the organism which generally has similarities in their structure but this similarities in their function those organs are generally called as homologous organ the organs which are similar in their structure but dissimilar in their function are called homologous organ let's talk about the second one second two examples i will take that is wings of birds and wings of insect right wings of birds and wings of insect right wings of the birds that is the fore limb is modified into the wings correct this is called fore limb and that fore limb is generally modified into the wings right but when you talk about the wings of insect right exoskeleton is modified into the wing right what is exoskeleton outer skeleton is generally called exoskeleton so in the birds the fore limb gets modified into the wings and in the insect the exoskeleton gets modified into the wings so you can see here they both have this similar structure but both has similar function of flying so the organs which are similar in function but dissimilar in structure are called as analogous organ so the organs which are similar in the function but dissimilar in the structure are generally called as analogous organs so homologous organ and analogous 
analogous organ both are the evidences for your evolution that's what all about your anatomical evidences third one which is very important is vestigial organs right as the word suggests vestigial that is waste right so degenerated or non functional organs in the body of a living organism is generally called vestigial organ right those organ which do not have any function in the human body are generally called as vestigial organ right now you can take a example there are many situations right there are certain specific structures in the body of a living organism they might be useful for the body at the same time under different situation there are certain organs or the same organ may not be functional i mean to say they may be vestigial or they may be harmful such kind of the organs are generally uh, generally non functional and they do not function in the body such are called as your vestigial organ so vestigial organs are the organs which are non functional the degenerated organ from the human body are called vestigial organ right and according to the principle of the natural selection this vestigial organ are non functional hence they do not have any function in the human body or the body of a living organism let's take a but before that though they are non functional in certain living organism but in certain group of living organism they might be also functional right okay so let's take a simple example the number 1 that is vermiform appendix you have heard about appendix right appendix is is a small outgrowth which is generally present on the right hand side of the large intestine right it's a small outgrowth now that is a vestigial organ in the human body in the human body the vermiform appendix does not have any function but yes it is functional in the ruminants right it is functional in what it is generally functional in the ruminants what are ruminants ruminants are nothing but the organism or the animal such as cows and buffalo right which undergo mastication and all they have the functional vermiform appendix second example is muscles of the ear pinna you know this is ear pinna ear muscles right ear muscles or ear pinna are non functional in the humans but they are functional in the monkeys for the movement of the ear pinna next coccyx coccyx is generally called as the tailbone right okay wisdom teeth whenever you get a pain in your teeth right that is wisdom teeth right and the hairs on the body these are all the examples of the vestigial organ so yes vestigial organ also proves to be the evidence for the human evolution next topic that is paleontological evidences right okay now what is paleontology Paleontology is a branch of a biology which generally deals with the study of the fossils, right? Everyone knows what are fossils. Fossils are the dead and decaying material of the plants and animal. Whenever the plants and animal generally get die, they get buried into the soil, and after that, they lead to the formation of the fossils, due to which we generally get the fossil fuels, right? Now, larger number. of your plants and animal or the organism they die they get buried into the soil and whenever they get buried into the soil whatever the remains and the impression which are been left over underground are generally called as the fossils right so this is your paleontology giving the idea about the fossils and yes paleontology or the fossils is a major factor in understanding the human evolution so let's take a simple example very important that is carbon dating method now what is carbon dating as the word such as carbon it's related to carbon okay so you know very well carbon is abundant in nature so consumption of the carbon or carbon consumption in plants and animal after their death generally stops right only the decaying of the carbon 14 that is carbon 14 isotope generally gets continued in case of the dead plants and the animals in case of the dead bodies of the plants and animal instead of remaining constant right the ratio between the the ratio between the carbon 14 and carbon 12 isotope gradually changes as carbon 12 is non radioactive here we have taken two isotopes of carbon carbon 14 and carbon 12 among which carbon 12 is non radioactive right now what happens is that the time passed since the death of a plant and animal can be calculated by measuring first the radioactivity of carbon 14 and the ratio between carbon 14 and carbon 12 respectively from the body of an organism 
right so if you want to measure the time period right between a plant and an animal which has been died you can measure it with the two factor one is the radioactivity of carbon 14 and second the ratio between the carbon 12 and carbon 14 isotope this method is generally called as carbon dating carbon dating is a very important method useful in paleontological studies and anthropology that is study of the age of a human fossils and the manuscript there you can generally identify this paleontological studies right so carbon dating consumption of the carbon once the plant or animal has been dead only the carbon 14 uh, carbon 14 decay generally gradually goes on in case of a dead plant or a animal body right instead of what instead of generally uh, changing or uh, being constant the ratio between the carbon 14 and carbon 12 generally changes right and that is why because carbon 12 is non-radioactive and the time which has been taken for a plant or an animal after the death that can be calculated due to the difference in the ratio between the carbon 12 carbon 14 and also the radioactivity of carbon 14 this is called carbon dating now paleontological evidences also say that there are certain vertebrates which have generally originated from some invertebrate that is aves and mammals are generally originated from reptiles reptiles from amphibians amphibians from pisces and pisces from the invertebrates that's what all about your paleontological evidences next one is connecting link now connecting link there are certain organisms or a group of organism or certain plants and animal which shows the characteristic feature of two or more group of organism so those organism or a group of organism or a plant or animal which generally shows the characteristic feature of one or two group of organism is generally called as connecting link. It means that morphological characters are generally seen in such kind of an organism by having two groups of organism that is called connecting link. Let's have a two example. Number one, peripatus. Peripatus is a connecting link between annelida and arthropoda. It means peripatus is a single organism having the characteristic of annelida also and arthropoda also. Let's have annelida like characters. Body is segmented. You know earthworm like if this is a body of an organism you can see the body of the organism is segmented. They have thin cuticle. What is cuticle? It is having a thin waxy layer right and parapodia like organs. Parapodia such as locomotory organ. Let's talk about um, arthropoda like uh, characters that is tracheal respiration and open circulatory system. Tracheal respiration they will respire with the help of the tra trachea and open circulatory system. So here they show the characters of annelida also and arthropoda also. So peripatus is a connecting link between annelida and arthropoda. Second example duck bile platypus is a connecting link between reptiles and mammals. Right, so duck bile platypus lays the egg like reptile, so it is reptilia, and it is having mammary gland and hairs on the body like mammals, that's why it is placed in between reptile and mammalia. So, yes, duck bile platypus is a connecting link between, between reptiles and mammalia, and that's what all about your connecting link. And the last topic that is embryological evidences. Embryo, you know very well, whenever there is a fertilization between a, a male par a male sex gamete and the female sex gamete, there is a formation of a zygote. Zygote leads to the formation of the embryo. Embryology, the branch of the biology which generally deals with the developmental stages taking place in the formation of an embryo is called as embryology, right? So you can see in the textbook, there are certain developmental stages seen in a different living organism or a group of organism. In the initial stage, there are similarities in the development of the embryo. This similarities gradually decreases in the later stages, right? It means that in the initial stages, the embryo looks similar in between all the group of organism. But in later stages, the embryo does not look similar. It means that there are certain gradual changes taking place in the development of the embryo. So this indicates that there are similarities in the initial stages that gives us a rise from the common 
ancestor. This is called embryological evidences. So total six evidences, morphological evidences, anatomical evidences, vestigial organs, paleontological evidences, connecting link and embryological evidences. This all evidences led to the evolution. Thank you.